Visitors from all over the world come to Gama to enjoy these performances, with actor Jack Thompson, one of the biggest supporters. My real uh, interest in the uh, culture of the Indigenous people came as a result of uh, my father, John Thompson, uh, who worked with ABC Radio, coming up uh, here at the top end in 1949. He came back with 8 mil film and, and uh, music uh, from the Bungal, the corroboree, and uh, as I knew it, and I was just stunned by that. And I thought, there's this whole other extraordinary world just outside my window. Not in another country, not on the other side of the world, right here, pretty much where I live. It is an extraordinarily rich culture. It's the oldest continuous cultural tradition in the world. I've learned how important it is to honour your fellows and your own culture. The Bungal dancers are stirred to action by the chilling vocals of the lead song man. The men from this clan have smeared themselves in white ochre and adorned red cloth to perform a story that has been passed down through their ancestors for thousands of years. It's an ancient but effective method of passing on information. A knowledge system today's Indigenous leaders are determined will be preserved and respected. Clan after clan performed through the hot, dusty afternoon, with many dancers imitating animals or birds or other natural features of the land so integral to their traditional cultures. Most of the clans are Yongnu people from northeast Arnhem Land. But others have travelled long distances to Gama, some from Central Australia. The call of the song man and the beat of his clapsticks stir the performers. Watch their feet, they actually kick the sand upwards. A foot stamping routine some Aborigines refer to as shaking a leg. These are intense performances, usually lasting no more than 30 seconds. The best dancers are highly respected. Some even fall to the hot sand to enact their story. Others go through high energy rituals. This is what, what we are all about, is dancing and singing. And you sing to your land, you sing about your country, and if you don't have a song and dance about your country, you shouldn't have a country. <laughs> In this episode of Travel Oz, we join the two teams as they begin a marathon road trip around Queensland, experiencing such things as bush races, rodeos and camel endurance rallies. There's so much to experience and discover on Australia's roads that a good old fashioned road trip is still something that's hard to pass by. So in order to fully experience the magic state of Queensland, we're going to take part in an epic five week road trip. Starting from right here in the state's capital of Brisbane, we'll make our way north to the Gulf of Carpentaria and then out to the tropical with Sundays and back into the arid interior, taking part in a whole range of wild activities along the way. So you'd be crazy to miss out on what we've got in store in the coming episodes of Travel Oz. Let's get started. The continent of Australia is connected by a vast network of arteries that run through just about all kinds of environments imaginable. The distances in this country are almost unbelievable for anyone who hasn't experienced them. And it is one of the few places on earth where people still drive for an entire day just to pick up the mail. 
There are few places on this planet that are as diverse as the Australian state of Queensland. Covering an area of over 1.7 million square kilometres, Queensland is Australia's second largest state and represents over a quarter of the country's total area. Due to its sheer size, this state contains a vast array of colourful environments, from the most lush and tropical to the driest and most desolate. Many see Queensland's wild environments as Australia's final frontier, and there is no doubt that some of the places you can find out here are as true blue Aussie as they come. We had been dreaming of embarking on an epic Aussie road trip for quite some time, and it was for these reasons that we decided Queensland would be the ultimate setting for our next adventure. So after drawing a few imaginary lines and crosses on our map, we had our trip planned and it was time to get ready. While quite similar in most ways, when it comes to travelling, there are a number of areas where we Tims truly stand apart. In fact, all you need to do is watch us pack for a trip just to see how different we really are. If packing were a mathematics equation, Tim Doyle would be Einstein. Don't let his looks fool you, Tim D is the ultimate perfectionist. To him, packing is all about symmetry, preparation and perfection. Nothing is ever left out. And at the other end of the spectrum, we have Tim Sharodi. To him, packing for a five-week adventure is more like a last-minute, 30-second thing you've got to do in between having a final beer with your mates and leaving on your trip. All packing techniques aside, once our gear was more or less in the van, it was time for the final preparations before we hit the open road. On your road trip, you're bound to meet a huge amount of people doing exactly the same thing. <laughs> and there's no doubt you'll have a lot in common. However, everyone road trips for their own different reasons, and because of this, they all do it in their own special and unique way. Probably some of the most common groups of travellers you'll find on Australia's roads are the backpackers and the young adventure seekers. For these guys, it's all about having as much fun as they possibly can on their less than meagre travel budgets. This is where I sleep at night. <laughs> comes up, goes down, and then we've got big massive bed there, pillows up here, just pull the curtains back and hope no one bothers you. Some of this, rip the label off, just smack it there, take the top off and then just turn it on and wait for it to heat up. It's not bad. <laughs> As the tide begins to rise. Freedom, I guess. It's really good. You do exactly what you want, whenever you want. It's just nothing stopping you to do whatever you like. But I've just finished school a couple of years ago, worked for a bit. Now I've saved up a bunch of money, quit my job, and <laughs> doing what I want to do, you know? Just getting out there and seeing the world, starting with Australia. Sunrise, sunset. Another group of adventure seekers that are taking to Australia's roads in droves are of an older but definitely no less adventurous breed. They are the grey nomads. These guys tend to travel in much more style than the younger travellers and backpackers, probably because it's their inheritance that's being spent doing so. I got everything, caravan, boat, uh, freezers and uh, you know all the luxury I want just for myself. Freezer and the microwave and dishing and another oven and all we need. <laughs> we do it in different um, uh, varieties of accommodation but we're all seeing the same country and thoroughly enjoying it. It's just the best place. Some people have even made a life on Australia's highways and there's none more famous than those who pump the lifeblood around this country, the Aussie truckies. Uh, this is where we sleep back here. You don't get much time to stay, spend in there, but that's when you do, that's where you go. We come down for a week at a time. We do two 12-hour shifts, change over. We work from midnight to midday. We swap over and check the truck over, and then the next bloke goes, and he does his 12-hour shift. And you yeah, usually get the old jet box cranked up, and you get sick of listening to that, turn it off, and you get plenty of time to think about a lot of things. So, yeah, but yeah, you get sick, you have your bad days, your good days, the same as any other job, I suppose. But, yeah. You don't get much time to spend at home, but yeah, it's, sort of, it's a lifestyle. 